welcome back to Regimentals YouTube channel and I am in Essex. I uh, got a call yesterday. Um, I've got like a yard, like a worker's yard here, vehicles everywhere. And um, uh, someone's uh, got a big collection of uh, military. A lot of it is reenactor stuff, but in there, there is gems. I've already spotted a, uh, an MP40, um, some nice British, uh, they, uh, World War II dated stuff, World War One, World War Two. So, and there's like loads of it. Um, I'm not sure whether I can film there, um, but if I take some shots, I will show them on the video. Um, it's always exciting when you find uh, things like this. Um, so let's see what we can find. So um, I'm back in the van on my own, we've been through all the stuff, uh, we've agreed a price to buy it, we're going to buy all the stuff that's here and then go to another container where there's more headgear and hats. Haven't been able to buy the guns because um, I can't get hold of my gun guy, lots of complications, I just don't want to get involved. Um, so I'm leaving those behind, there was a few rifles there, I can't, I can't get involved in that. And then, um, so yeah, now I've got to move the van into the lockup to load up, um, sort out the transaction and then um, get the stuff back to, uh, back to base. So uh, I might report back when I go to the other container, see what kind of um, hats and headgear there are there. So um, at the second uh, place, um, emptied another container filling up the back of the van with more stuff. Um, had to take out some of the uh, sort of surplus uniforms um, to make space so I could put some of the more valuable headgear in. Um, so yeah, just uh, watch, this, watch this space. So this is uh, day two of this massive find that I found in Essex. Um, I've been back down there this morning to pick up two more van pools and stuff. Um, and it's just immense. Now, don't be under the uh, illusion that everything here is, is brilliant stuff. There's, I would say there's 70% is reproduction or um, post-war. So I'd say 30% of it will be good for our website. The other stuff I'll take along to a show and I will just, you know, put it out on the floor and, and, and see who wants it. I might take some of the uh, stuff that's you know, similar, sort of related to military, I might take it to my vintage shop or do a couple of the local markets. Um, but just an enormous amount of stuff. Um, and just to give you viewers an idea of um, of where I went, because I, I, I realised as I was filming that, you know, I said uh, in the start of the video that I'm in Essex. Well, a lot of people overseas wouldn't know where Essex was. So, you know, we live in Hertfordshire and, and, and Essex is just like literally the next county an hour and a half away. Um, really unusual to find so much stuff. Um, sad story, the usual thing we do come across, the collector had died uh, and all this stuff uh, belonged to his wife and they had a, an agent who was taking care of it for them to make sure that she got looked after. It's very important because because sometimes unscrupulous people can, can, can make their way into collections like this and they don't pay serious prices and serious offers for this kind of stuff. So rest assured um, that we do always make sure that um, the receiver of the funds is getting a decent price for their items. It just adds to um, the awareness to make sure that you don't leave a legacy behind um, of, of loads of stuff. Make sure you either get it sold um, while you're young enough or, or, or make sure it's catalogued and listed, ready for someone to um, take care of the estate once you're gone. Otherwise you end up in a mess like this and it's down to left to honest people to try and make sure that the, the correct thing is done for them. So um, yeah, as you can see, there's tons of stuff here. I've got another garage uh, full of stuff. This is the better stuff. In the other garage um, that I've got, um, it's really just real junk stuff. Um, I, I, I'm just weighing up my options whether to get someone to come and take it all away uh, and pass it on to be someone else's problem, or or I might just you know gradually work through it and see what I can find in there. So it's um, Monday morning. 
and we've uh, just got back from Stonely um, show. I didn't get a chance to shoot any footage there. Um, I showed Stonely last year. Um, good show, successful, but now my task this morning is to start sorting out um, items from this collection that we bought um, at the weekend, um, sorry, last week. Um, it's all very smelly, so I'm having to air everything, um, make sure it stays outside, um, um, get some fresh air in it. And then uh, the gradual process of uh, uh, pricing, describing um, everything that was there. It's now been a few days since um, I bought this collection in Essex. Um, been back at the office, we've done Stonely, a very successful show, bought well, sold well, and this has been my only chance to actually get the camera out and feature some of the bits um, that we've got coming up in the updates. Um, my feet haven't touched the ground, I've been working non-stop every single day, all day. Um, and what I've managed to do is sort through some of this stuff from the collection and I've managed to pull out some of the better bits to be able to show you them on the video. So what I'm going to do in this clip now is just going to run through some of the pieces that have come out of this big collection that we bought. Um, and also then feature some other items which we've bought, you know, specifically really nice items that I wanted to feature in the video, just so you know what's coming up in the next uh, update. We won't be updating probably for two weeks now. I've got to go to America soon for the SOS show. Um, and I'm gonna try and time my updates so um, someone will update the website while I'm away. By the time I get back, the orders will be coming in and I can get straight back into work. So. First thing I wanted to do was feature some of the pieces from that collection in, in Essex. So uh, I'm just gonna run through the uniforms because a lot of it was mostly uniforms and hats. So there was a nice um, SA shirt, all original untouched, a very nice rural police uniform, uh, a second pattern tanker's jacket with some, I think it's Chinese writing here. It doesn't look Japanese to me. I think it's Chinese writing here very faintly um, onto the onto the breast there, rust spots, really nice Asia, proper used example. Big size as well. Uh, the USMC herringbone jacket. There was a mixture of British, American and German. There was a nice flight blouse there, all salty and, and untouched, original. That's your normal Luftschutz helmet. A nice police bayonet, HJDJ shirt. Nice, good condition. BD trousers. Um, this didn't come in that collection, but I'll show it to you now while it's on the floor. Turkish flag, it's 1917 dated, you know, which will coincide nicely with anything for people that collect Gallipoli stuff. There's, a, there's an inscription on here, 1917. Where is it? Up here. Really nice. A um, nice Luftwaffe flight NCOs cap, very good condition, large size. This guy who collected was a reenactor, so it's quite good because all of his original stuff is a very large size because I think he used to wear it when he was reenacting. A very nice untouched political leader's cap. Again, as you can see, big size. One of the best uh, Africa Corps Tropheims I've ever seen. Again, big size, very, very clean, excellent condition. Now these, for a long time, these were like, you couldn't give them away, they were £100 you know, 150 pounds, but just recently I've noticed how the price of these has really shot up and they're becoming very hard to find. Um, also, there was a very nice political leader's uniform with trousers, armband on the sleeve there, and this beautiful Tino uh, uh, tunic with lovely quality insignia on it as well. So they're the bits, some of the bits that have come from that collection. And then I wanted to show you some other bits as well which are coming into stock. There's this lovely um, tunic here, it's a, it's a wrap over, and I wanted to feature this because I've never ever seen or had one of these before, and it's so stunning. And what it is, it's the Hermann Goering Division assault gun wrap over. So it's what the, the uh, Hermann Goering Division uh, assault troops would have worn. They weren't in tanks, they were in the smaller assault vehicles. But this one is completely untouched and original, and it's got the proper markings inside for the Hermann Goering division, if I can just find it. Ah, oh, here we go. B44, now this is exactly how it would have been marked for the Hermann Goering division. Um, lovely untouched skulls and insignia on there. Lovely untouched eagle. Um, however, I think, um, as you can see from the 
the difference in the condition the shoulder boards have been added now although the shoulder boards have been added i managed to get this in a group of items so i managed to get the guys tropical uh, Luftwaffe uniform which is currently on our website loads of shirts trousers boots all came in one trunk from one man so these probably were his shoulder boards they might have been off of a different tunic maybe his his continental Luftwaffe tunic and, and 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 they were found with it so for now they've been put onto the tunic but they're probably not the original ones that were worn on the tunic at Stoney at the weekend, um, one of the best things I bought there was a big bag of, of buckles. Now there was First World War German and Second World War German buckles, all nice with their tabs, really nice. And they're all here on the shelves because I'm just about to photograph them. So I wanted to run through these with you to explain what they are. This one is, is very nice, it's a nice Turkish buckle. Um, but this one is a nice First World War buckle, 1915 dated. This one has the lovely stamping on the side here for Regiment 103, um, that's Saxon. Um, from memory, that's quite an interesting regiment. I can't remember why, but um, I will research that. Then there's others here. This one here is my favorite, I think, which is the 19, no, it's this one. That's 41 dated, but this one is rare. This is 1940 dated. Any Africa Corps buckles 1940 dated are always a premium and very, very hard to find. There's also a lovely Kriegsmarine one here in gold. Um, and then on the shelf here, there's another Kriegsmarine one I wanted to feature with the lovely marine stamping there on the tab. I think that's 42 dated. Um, also on the shelves here, you can see this very, very nice early Mecklenburg Strelitz pickle harb. Um, it has the early shaped, much taller than normal, um, but the, the Me Mecklenburg Strelitz insignia there, not, not to be confused with the Mecklenburg Schwering. Um, and then moving around here, uh, this is a lovely piece um, which has sold recently, but I wanted to feature it in the video because it's going to be sent out soon and it, it, I couldn't pass by the video uh, without featuring it on the video. It's a lovely um, aviation, First World War aviation tunic. I mean, the, the, the detail on the collar patches there is, is stunning. And this one um, uh, has come by to us. It originally was owned by Michael Baldwin, the very famous author. Um, and, and I just thought, what a great chance to feature it on the video before it gets sent out, because that's off to the other side of the world soon. Um, and then some other bits uh, which are really good I wanted to feature. This is a lovely Brunswick Officers Pickle Harb. Um, very nice condition, but what's most important about this uh, example is the fact it has its original box with it um, and it's not just a normal pickle hard box it's actually got its original label to it which um, has the address on it which is a suburb of Brunswick um, to show that that is the actual one that came the actual box that came with that helmet uh, this is very nice bought this at Stoneley at the weekend a very very nice first pattern FS uh, fighting knife um, just for those who don't know the the first pattern is identified by the wavy s cross guard see how it has like an s shape to it a slight kink there whereas the second pattern would be very much identical in nickel but with a straight cross guard um, this is a very nice piece now this came in the collection that we bought in in essex um, the the political leaders brocade belt um, he obviously wore this with his uniform uh, when he's reenacting, but very, very nice condition one. And the last few pieces I wanted to feature, um, increasingly hard to find, a lovely British First World War gore blimey cap with the Royal Artillery insignia on it. When you hold this and you feel the weight of it, um, you instantly feel that it's original. There's the, the, these are quite um, heavily faked, but at I felt the fake ones and they're so much lighter in weight than the normal uh, original ones. The, the weight is what, what tells you how original it is, but a beautiful piece with lovely age to the badge on the front. And then this here is uh, possibly one of the rarest pieces that I've had in a very long time. Um, I've never ever owned one of these before. Um, as you can see, underneath there appears to be um, an M43 cap. What this is, this is the German World War II Bergmutz with its original white cover. I've spoken to a few friends and collectors who collect just mountain troops items and they say they have never ever seen an original cover for it. Um, quite crude in construction um, but very very hard to find and I'm just going to peel the cover off now. Um, I wanted to feature it first with the cover on because it takes a little time to stretch it over the peak but when you take the cover off you can see 
um, that it's always been original to this cap. Lovely Edelweiss there on the side. Look at the age and the grime there on the seam there. Um, and as you unveil it, you can just see um, a lovely shaped officer's bergmuts there. And when you look inside, the age is, is you know, unmistakable. There's no doubt that you can see that's original. It's, it's without doubt what they call in America a one looker. But it's the cover which will give most of this item its value. And then uh, finally, I want to feature this, which I got at Stonely as well. Now, uh, this is instantly recognizable as the iconic Enigma machine. Um, the last one of these that I had sold for tens of thousands of pounds. Um, this is a, a, a reproduction. So it's a static reproduction and it comes from a company called the Enigma Hut. What they do is they, they, they made a quantity of these a few years ago. Uh, they made moving ones, which were selling for 10 to 15,000 pounds and they made static ones. And this is a static example. It's ideal for a museum or someone who collects uh, items relating to the Enigma machine and just want to have in their showroom a static example to show what the Enigma machine would have looked like. And this is going to be on our website um, just after I get back from the SOS. But a really stunning piece, ideal for someone who doesn't want to pay out tens of thousands of pounds for an original. So thanks for watching this video. Um, it's been an, an interesting uh, week or so trying to film it, been all over the place. Um, and some of the footage has been quite difficult to shoot with noises in the background and uh, being in difficult situations out and about. But it gives you guys an insight into how busy our week can be. Uh, which leads me on to apologizing to people who have emailed uh, requesting photographs of items or, or sizes. I just, I just don't have the time sometimes to answer everybody. Um, I always say in all my videos, text me. Text or pick up the old fashioned telephone and just phone. And if I'm in the office, I can give you the size. I can give you, um, sometimes what I prefer to do is switch onto FaceTime so people can view the item on FaceTime there and then rather than me have to take photographs of it and send it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm off to America now, so I won't be here um, for two weeks. The update will be in two weeks time. Um, I will be filming a video in America, so there'll be a, a something cool to watch when I'm back. Um, so don't forget, don't keep watching the website, uh, watch uh, Facebook and Instagram. Please like this video. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe and, um, oh, one last thing before I go. I met up with Bruce Crompton at the weekend. And um, as many of you know, I've been in a couple of episodes of Combat Dealers. And the good news is uh, Bruce has asked me to help him out shooting two more episodes. So um, I'm gonna be featured again on Combat Dealers. Um, hopefully we might do a bit of filming in my new vintage shop. Um, but that's something really exciting to look forward to in the, in the springtime. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.